you know exactly where you're at and I know exactly why you're here. So let's get down to business. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot and this is July 30th. It is Tuesday. Now what I like to do on this show is just to share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every single day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every single market. No shortage of penny stocks. And I'm always looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has potential to make us money. And in line with that, today we are looking at One MedNet, ticker ONMD. Now this is a company in the health sector and the health sector is growing. It's been growing really fast since COVID. Especially when we tried to reach out to virtual medicine, we started going online, live streaming, and that was good to a point. The problem was we couldn't get information in there like we needed. You can only do so much without information, and that's what this company is all about. Connecting academics, healthcare providers, anybody in the health sector to information wherever it's at in whatever format it's in. Now, ONMD did a merger back in November, and that got them uplisted to the NASDAQ. And they did pretty good that day. <laughs> they came on at about five, six dollars and jumped all the way up to 11. And that was it. She fell very quickly in the next 30 days, came down to about 75 cents. And for the most part, she's been down there for quite a while with some activity here and there, including right now. Right now, volume is coming in. She was underneath all the SMAs, has climbed out over them and over the 200 and looks like she's ready to run. And we've got a lot of push going on right now because this company is expanding like wildfire. Just last May, they told us that they had grown 500%. Now, the last time I looked at this company, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, they had something like 200 partners back then. And now they've got 1,400 partners. So they're growing really fast and I can see them being one of the biggest, if not the biggest, information data platform here in America. So ONMD, she finished the day today at a buck 46 and she's up almost 27%, jumping 31 cents today. Now this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. I like penny stocks on the major exchange. First off, it's safer. <laughs> There's a lot more rules on the major exchange that these companies have to abide by and people are watching and paying attention. So that's just going to make it safer for me in the long run. Plus, there's no transaction fees for major exchange stocks. Buy and sell your shares absolutely free. You can trade pre-market, aftermarket. You don't need special qualifications or permission. Just get in there and trade. Less opposition. You get big movements during those periods of time. And there's a lot more money, a lot more volume up on the major exchange compared to the OTC. And the OTC looks like it never got out of bed for the day. I love my penny stocks on the major exchange. Now they tell us she's a shell company. I don't see that. Shell company means that they aren't in business. They aren't making any revenues. Well, they got all kinds of revenues. So I don't know what the heck that's doing up there. So what exactly is one met about? Well, I did tell you, but let's go through some of the information just in case I missed something. They tell us that one MedNet provides innovative solutions that unlock the significant value contained within real world data, RWD. Repositories, which they have over 1,400 repository healthcare systems in their platform. One MedNet's proprietary, IRWD platform provides secure, comprehensive management of diverse clinical data types, including electronic health records, written out or typed out, laboratory results. This could be a cardiology machine. It just gives you a graph, right? Or medical imaging, an MIR scan or an x-ray. It can work with all of that. One MetNet's platform is designed to meet the clinical requirements necessary across various domains, including, but not limited to, rare diseases, oncology, cardiology. The company is committed to delivering precise and robust research support services that span the entire continuum of care. Now, they've got a really big organization and it is growing really fast. They tell us right now they've got over 1,400 health partners that is just exploding. 
over 31 million patients and over 121 million clinical exams, whatever the heck that means. So they tell us here, the bottom line is getting your data precisely when you need it, what you need. It's not like we couldn't get data before computers can get data, but can they actually access x-rays and handwritten notes? Can they collaborate the information? Not really, but with AI involved now, AI is smart. AI knows how to read, how to collaborate and how to give you what you're looking for. Your research depends on getting the right data in the right format. Connect to our large and ever-growing network of healthcare providers and academic centers to get the real-world data you need for rich real-world evidence. Requests for real-world data are often painful. You make precise requests and still you get a mountain of information that's questionable and you have to still sort through it all. Not anymore. Our IRWD platform matches your requests with the exact data you need, helping you get your solutions to market faster and to curate your solutions quicker. You just don't need data. You need data that meets your specific parameters. And that's the bottom line, folks. I do a lot of research. I'm telling you what, I have to keep getting deeper and deeper, narrowing in my search. I waste a lot of time trying to find what it is I'm looking for. That's what their program does. It brings you what you're looking for specifically out of all the massive amount of data out there. You need data that meets your specific parameters in a quick usable format that offers you the ability to dive deeper or wider when needed. Use our tool sets to quickly search for your criteria and request the de-identified RWD. Then filter your request through our team of medical experts and data scientists to guarantee a 100% match for your request. That's something, guaranteeing a 100% match. Imagine if Google could do that. You ask it what you want and it knows how to get it and bring it exactly what it is you're looking for. Yeah, there's wishful thinking. So this company is working in the health sector on both sides of the coin. They are working with health care. They're working with physicians and stuff. They have patients, but they're also working with the health innovative sector. Companies that are looking for new drugs, new therapies, new devices. They just need more information. Now they're getting all the information that they need correlated. So they're not wasting their time sorting through it. So that's what the company does. And I think with all the virtual realities, uh, AI internet coming out, with this being able to get information, I think it's going to explode. I think healthcare is going to become much more practical and easier for us. And we're going to be able to get answers a lot faster. And this company is on its way to being one of the biggest data resources I've seen here in the country. All right, before we jump into the information about the stock, I want to take a look at this update news press that came out June 24th because it really does cover a lot of information for us. Just shorts cuts a lot of the running around. First thing they tell us here is that they had to terminate their CPA. They were using BF Borgers CPA. Now, if you've been out of the loop, May 3rd, the SEC busted BF Borgers CPA for fraudulent filings. Seems they had over 1,500 fraudulent filings for over 300 different companies, public and private. This was one of them. They did this back at the end of the first quarter when their financials were coming out. And right now they're late on those financials. They've got until December to get them caught up. If they don't, they got until December to get them caught up. Now the company just got out of hot water. They were under a buck for too long. Right now we're at a buck 46. They were under a dollar for too long. They were given six months to have us, the investors, bid that price up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. We do that, they're out of hot water. Ta-da, we succeeded. But they could easily slip back down under a buck, right? So what happens then? The whole process starts all over again. We're not back in hot water, it's just gotten warm. So hopefully we don't go that direction. The next thing they tell us is about two equity purchase agreements here. One that they just made and one they just canceled. They tell us here on June 17th, 
they did an equity agreement with Yorksville Advisors Global. This SEPA has committed Yorksville to purchase up to $25 million of the company stock over the next two years. And they get a discount, they get 3% off of the price, whatever it is at the time. Now they tell us at the same time that they made this $25 million deal, they were canceling this $4.5 million deal. They tell us the SEPA that we just read about now supersedes and replaces the company's definitive securities purchase agreement with Helena Global Investment Opportunities, which had provided for up to virtually $4.6 million. This was terminated June 14th, 2024. Now, I just found this interesting. That's why I brought it up here. But this is the most recent filing that just came out. Now, this sounds an awfully lot like the last deal, except they don't mention the name of the company. On July 23rd and July 25th, the company entered into a securities purchase agreement with certain institutional investors, no name, for gross proceeds of $4.6 million, approximately. The company is going to use this money for general corporate purposes, and they are going to buy some Bitcoin with it but they don't tell us how long they plan on holding that Bitcoin. Now, I can't say that this is Helena coming in under the wire. I don't know. But I do know that we've got virtually 5 million here and we've got 25 million on the other piece of news. So that gives us 30 million that the company now has available to progress their business. That's excellent. <laughs> That's what you want. A company that has access to cash, like a car that has access to gas. If you do, you're going to get a long, long ways. So this is looking real pretty. Now they tell us down here, uh, the company is late, as I said, on their last financial. They are being given a time to appeal it. They have to appeal it by August some date. And if they appeal it, they'll be given to December to file this. Now, it really shouldn't take that long. They have gotten on new CPAs. They'll dive into them as quick as possible and get them out. I don't see that being a problem. So I'm really not worried about that too much. So now let's take a look at what the relative volume was for the company today. Well, that's a nice increase. Over the last 30 days, she's been averaging about three quarter million. Now on the NASDAQ, that's definitely under the radar. Today, she did just a little over three million. So we're getting about four times her normal volume. Share structure for the company. Not looking too bad. They only tell us what the outstanding shares are here. 23 million. Outstanding shares, if you deduct what the insiders own, will tell you the float. Well, we don't know what they own. So we have no clue here except to say that our float can't be any higher than 23 million. Can't be higher than the outstanding share count. And being on the NASDAQ, they have a floor I used to think it was a million, but I read just a little while ago, it's a half a million. They can't have anything less than a half a million in the float. So somewhere between a half a million and 23 million. Market cap for the company, we're at about 27 and a half million. Financials, well, they said they were a shell company, said they weren't making any money. Looks like money here. Now, they're not making a profit, not on the annuals. 2022, they did $1.1 million. We know that's millions and not thousands because they tell us to add three more zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. 2023, they dropped a little bit, just a little over a million, but both years they were taking a loss, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Looking at the quarterlies, we're not getting anything on the quarterlies because she's on the NASDAQ and doesn't look like we have any semi-annuals either. But we do get a balance sheet and we want to see that on the quarterly. All right, looking at what we have in the bank, remembering those three zeros, thank God, we've got $47,000 in the bank. Ooh, assets, really low, that's surprising. $463,000 in assets. I don't even wanna look at liabilities. Oh my God, folks. Whew. No, I did not look at this before we talked. We got liabilities of $13.3 million. Do the math. We are holding stockholder deficit of just under $13 million. Boy, that got me hot and bothered. Not crazy about that. But you know what, folks? When it comes to day trading, 
if a chart is hot and a chart is running, fundamentals, bad news, good news, none of that really matters. A chart is working on its own. It's like a traffic light. Traffic light really doesn't care what's going on around it. It keeps doing what it does. And right now the chart is breaking out and nobody is worried about this deficit. Now, if you're getting in for a long hold, you need to take that into consideration. But if you're getting in to catch a gain today or tomorrow and get the heck out, we're not too worried about that. Take a look at our disclosures for the company. Woo! God, look at all those 8Ks. Now, I did go through these 8Ks, and most of them are correlating to news. I've already shared a couple of them with you, but we're going to look at news. That'll cover the rest of them. Right there is the NT10Q filing. That came out May 14th. NT is an abbreviation for not. We are not filing our quarterly report on time. Now, when you file this filing as an announcement, it buys you five extra days. Well, obviously, they are way, way past that. And one of these 8Ks is that the NASDAQ telling them you're late on this filing. As I said, they have until August 16th, I think it is, to appeal it. If the appeal is granted, they have until December to get these in. They could get them in even before August 16th and wouldn't even need to appeal it. But as I said, I'm really not worried about the financials. All right, let's see what we've got in the news now. So there is lots of news here. There's even more news than is listed here. Matter of fact, there was one piece of news that was telling us about the announcement that their platform had expanded 500%. And as you're going to see here in recent news, it is getting bigger and bigger. So I'm all the way back here to the 29th of May. The company inks an agreement with global top 10 medical technology company. They just keep making more and more partners, getting into their databases, getting bigger and bigger. The company significantly expands industry access to proprietary IRWD network and platform by joining AWS Partner Network. I do believe AWS is the biggest network and it is held by Amazon. Everybody connects to this one. In June, the company partners with leading clinical trial design and software company in significant data license agreement. Now, in this, they did not tell us who the company was. In a piece of news we're going to see up here, they do. Um, the company updates on auditor change and announces related receipt of NASDAQ notice. We went through those updates already. This here is news I do want to jump into. This came out on July 22nd. Siddle unveiled as one MedNet's newest alliance partner. Citadel software products and services are utilized by hundreds of life science organizations, including top 30 biopharmaceutical companies. Remember, biopharmaceutical companies are companies that are going to want all this data and information on other things that they can put to use. They tell us here that further to their press release dated June 14th, the company announced today that Citadel Inc., a global leader in clinical trial design and software for clinical trials, has now identified itself as the other party with which one MedNet recently entered into an IRWD customer data license agreement. This partnership aligns perfectly with one MedNet's market expansion strategy and significantly extends our commercial reach within the global life science industry. And the last piece of news is a $4.6 million private placement, which I just got done showing you, the unnamed private placement, which I think probably is Helena. So they got $30 million to progress. We are holding about $13 million in deficit. They are making revenues, though it looks like they're not making a profit. I would have to dive deeper into the financials. But what I see here is they're a growing business. They are touching into every health portion of the medical arena with their data. There's nothing that they can't touch into because the data is for everything. And they are connecting more and more of these academies, universities, uh, medical centers. Anybody who has data, it's all being connected into this platform so everybody universally can put it to use so that we can get better health care.
I am liking what, what I'm looking at. I think this is going to be a good long hold. Right now, it looks a little iffy. She's got some fundamentals to fix. But in the short term, I think we've got some gains to be taken. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's chart one med net now, ticker ONMD. And we're going to do this on my free trading platform. That's right, think or swim. Got this opened up to a six month, four hour view, which is actually the entire chart for the company. This goes all the way back to the very first day they came on the NASDAQ. That was November 7th. They came on at roughly five, six dollars a share, and they jumped up to $11.20 that day but they came down pretty much immediately. And over the next 30 days, they just continued falling to roughly four bucks. Here at the beginning of December, something happened. I have no clue what it was, but she dropped from $4 down to roughly 75 cents. And she sat down there for about a month and a half and then something good happened. No clue what it was, but I got the price ripping 400%. Up here at the top of that run, our 200-day SMA came into the picture, and immediately the price ducked up underneath the 200 and has been stuck there predominantly for about four months. Then we had the news come out about the platform increasing in size by five-fold. Well, the price increased by six-fold, 600% 6 this ripped. Then it came back down underneath our 200, and right now she is breaking out again. Bouncing off of our friend, the 200 haul, getting through every single SMA, including the 200, hitting a high up here of a buck 60, starting off three days ago at 80 cents. So in three days, we've had a 100% run. She has pulled back. She came all the way back down here to about a buck 20, tagging her nine day SMA. It's a beautiful landing. Then she pushed herself back up and she's sitting on top of the 200 right now. That's beautiful placement. All of our SMAs are pushing up towards the 200 and climbing right now, though our 200 has got a little bit of downtrend to it, just a little bit. But all of our oscillators are climbing right now, very, very strong, except our RSI, which is pulled back because of that one red bar after market. Otherwise, this looks really good to me. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, we've got a trend change there. Look at your 200-day SMA. She's falling here. She's flat in the middle. It's funny that the price is falling while it's level. But right here after hitting this low bubble, she hit that 200, surged above it, and now she's got the 200 climbing along with all the other SMAs, which are crossing the 200 right now. These are called golden crosses. They normally give power to the price rise. Oscillators were very strong until after market. We've had a lot of pullback here. She's fallen all the way back down to the 20, which is a nice solid landing. She has bounced back and it looks like she's struggling right now to get on top of her nine. All the oscillators do show a little bit of weakness. RSI is now down there at 53. I don't like to see that underneath 55. Take a look at our five day, five minute. Again, we do have a trend change. Right, She was falling until she hit this low bubble. After the low bubble, she crossed up on top of that 200, and she has been on top of the 200 ever since. She's been bouncing off of it. You can see she's respecting it. Started to pull away. We hit that high today of a buck 60. She came down, went sideways, and after market, it's just gotten a bit silly here. Everything has fallen down to our 200-day SMA. Just dipped underneath it, and she's bounced back up. Now, all of these SMAs are above her head coming down, which is going to have some pressure on her. She could dip down lower. However, I'm getting the impression she is going to bounce here. I can't guarantee that. If we look at our oscillators, what do they say? They are still showing down pressure. So let me back up to the 15 minute. All right, we don't have any SMAs in that region. Let's check our 30 minute. There you go. All right, you've got to look around because that was just kind of dangling in the air. So she came down to the 200 haul and the 50 uh, day on our 30 minute chart. She bounced off of that and she's pulled up and right now she is near the 20. So if she was going to fall, I think she'd come down to the 30 minute 50 day SMA here before she bounced back up. But everything is looking good. 
all of our SMAs are climbing. We just had a lot of pullback after market, but this could change pre-market tomorrow. This could easily come back up and set a new high tomorrow morning before the bell. So you may want to watch this pre-market, but you're definitely going to want to watch it tomorrow. And if you're not looking at a day trade, I do like this for a long hold. They do have some things to work out, but I get the feeling this company is going to hook up with virtually everybody out there and they're going to be the massive medical data center for the country and who knows, maybe for a lot of other countries as well. I like where this company is heading, but I like what the chart is showing. Even with this aftermarket crud, I'm not real happy about that, but this could be a good buy-in point right here before she takes off again. There's a lot more information to dive into. I suggest you do it. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.